All right, so in this lesson, we're gonna be looking at some ratio analysis. Specifically, we are going to be looking at inventory turnover analysis. So in this section, we've been talking about inventory and cost of goods sold. And we know that when we have inventory, we're actually tying up all of our cash to that inventory. And we know that cash is king in the regular day of personal finances. We wanna make sure that we have cash. So if our cash is tied up in inventory, that's not necessarily a good thing. So this ratio helps us kind of understand in a number sense what we're doing with our inventory. So that's what we're gonna be looking at here in this lesson. So let's talk a little bit about ratio analysis. So I know I've talked about this a lot in other lessons, but for those of you that are just watching this for the first time, let's talk about what ratio analysis is. So ratio analysis is a way to get a quick look at a different aspect of a business's financial. So instead of looking at the hard numbers, we're going to manipulate the numbers a little bit to kind of give us some better information, some new information for us to make different decisions. Now, by doing ratio analysis, one can actually compare current results with the past or even expected results as well as competitors so you know when we think about you know two companies let's say a, you know a big retailer versus a small retailer it's hard to compare numbers when the big retailer is doing let's say a billion dollars in sales and the smaller ones doing hundreds of thousands of dollars right so that's a little tough but if we were able to find a way to put them on level playing fields and compare, it can give us a better insight on whether or not we, the small company, is doing an efficient job just like the big company is. And in some instances, they might be. How do we do that? Well, we use ratios as a way to look at what we're doing versus what the big companies are doing and see if we're in the ballpark of what they're doing proportionately to everything else. So proportion is also part of this. Now, inventory turnover is what we're looking at. So inventory that is sitting on the shelf also means that cash is tied up in that inventory and cannot be used for other things. And that's not a good thing thing. The key to a good retailer and wholesaler is how fast can you turn over your inventory? How many times in a year do you turn over your inventory? So what do we mean by turnover? We mean that, you know, today I buy inventory. Tomorrow I put it on the shelf. A couple days later, I sell it and then I get back my cash. So the turnover is how many times, how many cycles of that can I go through in one year? So if I go through it 12 times a year, that means it's taking me 30 days from the time that I buy the inventory to selling the inventory and collecting my cash. There's a 30 day cycle, okay? So we wanna get that cycle as short as we can so that we have many cycles during the period. And again, this is based on industry and other competitors. We would expect a grocery store in the produce to turn over the inventory almost every few days. And if they're turning it over every few days, we're looking at them turning over their inventory a hundred times a year, right? But when we talk about like a um, clothing store, they might not be able to turn over things very quickly, so it might take them 30 days. So they may only be able to turn over their inventory um, 12 times a year, once every 30 days. So that's what we're looking at inventory turnover. How many times can we turn over our inventory in a given year? So how do we calculate this? Well, this is how we calculate it. We're gonna take the cost of goods sold so the cost of goods sold from the income statement, and we're gonna divide it by the average inventory in our balance sheet. So this is an instance we're gonna to need to look at the income statement and the balance sheet to be able to get to the inventory turnover ratio. Now, the inventory turnover ratio tells us how many times in a year we buy and sell inventory on average. This doesn't mean that we're always doing this. This is just giving us an average. The higher the turnover ratio, obviously, the better, right? So we're turning it over, we're creating cash. Now, we also need to kind of look at this from the industry data standpoint, right? So, you know, if you are turning over 20 times a year, what is your competitors doing? What is the industry doing? If they're turning over 30 times, you're a little bit slow to turn your inventory over. So your number, although it's 20, 
is not very good. If you're able to turn over 100 and your competitor's only turning 75, that means you're able to turn a little bit faster than your competitors, which is a good thing. You're selling more probably, which means that you're putting more to your profit line. So again, past results as well as your competitors are important gauges of how we're doing with our turnover ratio. Now, let's take a look at how we can apply this. We're gonna use our company here, Best Buy. This is the actual financial statements for Best Buy, and you'll notice that we've got some numbers here. So let's go ahead and calculate what Best Buy's inventory turnover ratio is. So the first thing that we need is the cost of goods sold. So if I look on their income statement, I see that cost of goods sold right here, and it's $32,918,000,000. So $32,918,000,000. Now it's time to find the average inventory. So here's where students get mixed up. Average inventory means that you actually need to find the beginning inventory and the ending inventory, add them together, divide by two, because we have two things that we're adding. So I'm gonna go look on their balance sheet and I see that inventory for this company, Best Buy was 5,409, and then they also had 5,209 at the beginning. So this would be beginning, this would be end. So last year's end is this year's beginning. So don't get that too um, mixed up. Last year's end is this year's beginning. If I had $100 in my bank account at the end of last year, it also means that I started the year with $100, okay? So we're gonna add those two numbers together. So 5409 plus 5209 and divide it by two. When we do that, I'm gonna get 6.20. So Best Buy is able to turn their inventory 6.2 times a year. Is that good? We really don't know. Is that bad? We really don't know. So we don't really know because we need to compare it to the industry. And unfortunately, I don't have the industry, so I don't know if this is good or bad. But before we get to like the mechanics of the 6.2, let's also talk about how useful this information is to management. So if you told management that their inventory turnover ratio is to 6.2, I can almost guarantee that management would have no idea what you're talking about, okay? Because that the 6.2 doesn't make sense. So what can we do to make this make sense to our bosses? Well, the one thing that we can do is maybe convert it to days. If we can convert it to days, you'll understand better, your manager will understand better. So we do have a way of doing that. Now the inventory ratio is hard to understand if you're not an accountant because these are accounting terms. So the problem with the inventory turnover ratio is that you know we can use the turnover ratio and turn it into information that management will understand, but they just don't understand 6.2. All right, so we can use something called days to sell as a way to convey the same information. The keyword here, the same information, we're just gonna change it to a way that a manager can understand. So days to sell, the way that we calculate it is we're gonna take 365 and we're gonna divide it by the inventory turnover ratio that we just calculated on Best Buy. So. 365 divided by our inventory turnover ratio will give us the answer in days rather than times per year, and your boss will understand it better. So let's go back to our example here with Best Buy. We know that our inventory turnover ratio is 6.20. We know the calculation for days to sell is 365 divided by uh, inventory turnover ratio. So we're gonna go 365 divided by 6.2 gives us 58.87 days. So if I told my manager that it's taking on average 58.87 days to turn over our inventory, meaning that from the time we buy it and it's in our system to the time we sell it, takes 58.87 days on average, now my manager understands that number. They understand days. That they're basically saying that it, we're basically saying that it's taking two months for us to acquire and then sell our inventory. And again, is this good or bad? We're not sure, we have to look at the industry. But if the industry is turning over their inventory in 30 days, this is really bad. 
we were taking twice as much time to be able to sell our inventory to our customers. So we got to find a way to either cut back on our inventory or find a way to have our customers buy it in a quicker amount of time. So 58.87 days, this is usually the best way to convey this message to our bosses. So that's the inventory turnover ratio. That's also the days to sell. We, they use them in conjunction with each other to again, give useful information to manage it as well as useful information to external users. So hope you enjoyed this lesson. I know there's a lot of calculations and that's what makes this cal this chapter a little or this section a little bit tougher to get. But if you understand all the calculations and the mechanics, you'll do really well. If you're a math person, this is your section. So hope you enjoyed this lesson and I hope you enjoyed this section and we'll see you in the next section. Hey guys, if you like this video, make sure you press the like button below. And if you're looking for worksheets that go along with all of these lessons, head over to my website at patricklymsa.com or click in the link in the far right. And I've got your next lesson right over here. So just click that link and it'll take you to that video. So until then, we'll see you in the next lesson.